So, you read the title, you know what this video is all about. Uh, in every maker's life there is a point where he has a problem that isn't solvable with 3D printing. Maybe it's uh, because you need a watertight temperature resistive part that has to be tough or you want to make more than just one part and printing those uh, is just not economical because it takes too long. Um, then normally you start to googling about injection molding but oh boy when you fin find out about the cost of professional mold making. Uh, at this point you will normally uh, <laughs> you are normally in too deep and start looking for hand powered desktop injection molding devices but you find those and you realize the price seems way too high or they don't ship to your location without a huge fee and at this point you think hmm those things they look quite easy maybe i can build something like this myself and you dip into the field of do-it-yourself injection molding devices and there are a lot of designs out there and if you go down this rabbit hole and check out some of the designs you are put off a bit because most of them require you to weld your own frame or to bolt your own frame together and some of these designs even need two people uh, hanging on a, a lever to generate the amount of pressure you need for injection. And um, yeah, with this criteria in mind, I began um, making my design choices for my own injection molding machine. And I settled for a hand cranked hydraulic press because it's able to uh, create the amount of pressure that I need. Uh, the sturdy frame also double, doubles as a mounting point for everything I need, so I don't have to weld a frame myself. So, uh, for the heating section I had two choices. I could go for a pipe with a heating mantle or I could take a massive aluminium block and drill some holes into it. I chose the aluminium block because uh, I don't trust a pipe with that amount of pressure on it to not to deform. Uh, controlled, uh, to control the whole thing I choose the cheapest uh, uh, pit controller I could find that came already with a solid state relay and a high temperature uh, sensor probe. For the heating cartridges itself then I chose two uh, 500 watt uh, capsules uh, driven at 220 volt AC. They are cheap AF and <laughs> the right thing if 12 volt DC is just too boring for you. No, just just joking. Um, they were a lot cheaper than the DC ones and I don't need to buy uh, extra DC power source to run them. That's why I choose them. Uh, with all this the giant design choices explained, here's a quick build compilation with some very generic music.
So, we have built our press. Now let's make a test and inject some plastic into a mold. For that we at first will need to mount our mold onto the device. Then we jack up the temperature and press our polypropylene into the mold. Fun fact, the polypropylene that I'm using here it was sold as stuffing for teddy bears, but it works just fine. After the injection we need to cool down the mold by dunking it into a bowl of water. Yes, I know that looks very professional. Now we can go on to remove the part from the mold and here we have it. An injection molded part on an injection molding machine that is so simple and cheap everyone can build it at home for below 200 euros of part cost. If you found this interesting and want to build your own I made a five part series with a lot more details about this project so check them out. Also you can check the build dis uh, description on Hackaday.io. Uh, I have a project page there linked down in the description. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next video with another random tech project. If you like this project and you want to see more of it in the future press that button because it gives me an endorphin kick every time I see that number go up and it motivates me to make more content.